Denver, Colorado has become the very first American city to decriminalize another controlled substance. This comes after 21 other states, including Colorado, have already decriminalized, legalized, or allowed small amounts of marijuana. But on Thursday, May 16th, okay, May 16th, this is not old news, The city's psychedelic mushroom initiative, which decriminalizes the growth, possession, and consumption of psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms, psychedelics, officially kicked in. Okay, I wish that right now you would just simply pause because we know it was just it was just decriminalized in Colorado. It's already on the ballot in 2020 in multiple other states. It's going to sweep the nation the next several years. I wish we could just pause and just think about what the world, what America is going to look like, what the youth's minds are going to look like in 10 years if we don't stand up and start literally fighting against this thing. Let me tell you right now that there is a war taking place for your consciousness. I would prefer the word soul, okay? But... I'm using this word because this is their argument that we'll be getting into. And the battles are being won right now at an alarming rate for the wrong side. Hmm. We are going to be talking about this on today's program in addition to what just took place in Alabama with their new abortion laws. Incredible things are happening. And what to expect next from that. is as central to understanding your humanness as having sex or having a child or having responsibilities or having hopes and dreams and yet it is illegal we are somehow told we are infantilized we're told you know you can wander around within the sanctioned playpen of ordinary consciousness and we have some intoxicants over here if you want to mess yourself up we've got some scotch here and some tobacco and red meat and some sugar and a little tv and so forth and so on Uh, but these boundary dissolving hallucinogens that give you a sense of unity with your fellow man and nature are somehow forbidden. This is an outrage. It's a sign of cultural immaturity and the fact that we tolerate it is a sign that we are living in a society as oppressed as any society in the past. That was crazy Terence McKenna arguing for psychedelics from clearly a fallen man point of view. He was essentially arguing for pharmakia, the Greek word in the Bible used for magic and sorcery, Mm -hmm. drugs to communicate with spirits and to perform acts of witchcraft. But let me, I mean, honestly, didn't it sound good? It sounded great. I mean, didn't it sound sensible, sound logical? Someone that wasn't familiar with the word of God was like, well, I can get kind of get on board with that. Mm -hmm. You see, watch out. That no man deceives you, because I want to make it very clear to you that the boundaries that Terrence McKenna talks about dissolving are actually legal and natural boundaries established by God. That's right. And we're going to be dealing with that in just a few minutes. But I just want to take a, a quick minute and just give you an update. I want to encourage you to stand with this ministry. We just got through our, our first little telethon, which we're going to do two times a year. We needed to raise $2,500 in monthly recurring support. We are right now just over 25% of our goal. We've raised over $600 in monthly recurring support. Thank you for those 
that are standing with us. And several millennials are, stand, are standing with us, including uh, a man by the name of Ethan, Connie, Chris. New millennials are standing with this program, and it just energizes me. I yeah. love it. I love it. But we still need your support in a major way. We still need 75 people giving uh, a donation of $25 or more a month. Or, or, or even 19 people giving a donation of $100 a month. This is a real act of faith. Andrew has quit his job. Yep, I'm okay. here full time now. He's put, he's put, well, almost. I mean, essentially, you've quit your job. Yeah, he has basically. two more weeks. Yeah. He put in his two weeks. And so this is a real act of faith because we need that monthly reoccurring support just to make sure that we can keep going. But let me tell you that the vision at this ministry is great. So get involved. Go to ZachDrewShow.com. Click that bright orange donate button or write us at IGBY PO Box 797, Decatur, Illinois 62525. It is on your screen. Let's, okay, that's over. Donate. Let's get back into it. This show, I've got to just kind of preface this because if you've been tuning in just the last few weeks, you're like, man, so I guess the Zach Drew show, it's kind of like a drug show. Like, <laughs> like you know, what's going on with, with drugs? Okay, listen, I've got to tell you right now that that's, this is what we've been talking about the last few weeks. But, you know, this is a very, this is a current events. We're going to be talking about abortion today. It's a technology Mm-hmm. New age, uh, the new age spirituality, uh, drugs, psychedelics, they're all connected into this end times deception. And we mm-hmm. have been hitting this hard. One reason is because hardly anybody is talking about it. Yeah, that's true. And besides that, it, it, so nobody's talking about it, and it's a huge issue, and it's a very extensive issue. So for something that is never covered, and for how deep it is, I mean, we really can't cover all of it in 30 minutes. Exactly. And you know, every week, I I really do, I sit, I sit down, and it's not just for like one time, it's actually several times t- towards the beginning of the week, and I ask the Lord, Lord, please, I need your help. It's like, I feel like... Every week, whenever we do a good show, it's like, well, what's going to happen next week? And Mm -hmm. every week I'm like, Lord, I need your help. I need your help to figure out, like, what do you want to say? And we kind of plan out a couple weeks at a time, really. But And I feel like the Lord gives me direction. And not every time am I going to get it right, okay, because I'm human. Mm -hmm. But I really don't feel released from this subject yet. I feel that in this current season, this is what... I'm supposed to talk about because like I said there is a war taking place for your consciousness technology new age spirituality psychedelics are all connected and they're all major pieces of the end time setting people up for the ultimate deception you see that's I feel like the Lord has and and you have gifts okay like the Lord has called you some to be preachers some to be pastors some to be apostles some to be prophets okay now a pro a modern day prophet in the Old Testament you kind of refer to them as a watchman and it was a prophet in the Old Testament wasn't just about feel good words. Mm. It was about being able to see what was truly taking place in the spirit realm of what was coming upon Israel and what the people needed to do to repent or to prepare and then to repent from their sin and to turn back from the Lord. I really do feel a, a watchman mandate on my life to warn the people of things to come and to get right with the Lord. Get to get right with Jesus. You see, in Matthew 24, the very first thing that Jesus warned his disciples of, the disciples came to him and said, tell us, Lord, what will be the signs of the end of time? And he goes on this massive long list in Matthew 24. But the very first thing that he said, the first thing was this. Jesus answered them and said, take heed that no one deceives you. And to me, what that means is that we're going to see deception in the end times in a way that we have never seen before. I mean, think about it in Matthew 24 when it says this in Matthew 24, 24. For false Christs and prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, the saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Something so insane will be coming upon the earth that even the the saved people will be deceived if it were even possible. And so what my goal is, my goal is to warn as many people as possible and to save as many people as possible from that day. Let's get into it. Andrew, tell us what happened this week in 
Colorado. So in Colorado, there was a bill um, called Initiative 301 that was passed. It went through, which decriminalized the use and possession of magic mushrooms. So it, it's the first ever, as we said, it's the first ever U.S. popular vote on legalizing or decriminalizing psilocybin. Supporters of the initiative cite the medical benefits of psilocybin, such of as, you know, fighting depression and anxiety as justification for decriminalizing it. They always argue through rose-colored glasses. So, so Denver is not the first to propose such measures. California tried it recently. They couldn't get enough signatures to get it through. But we will be seeing in California and Oregon both... Um, similar measures on their ballots in 2020. And by the way, yeah, I think this is an important point. This isn't a partisan issue. It's not like uh, it's a Republican-Democrat thing. Uh, and just, I, I, I got to preface this because you're probably thinking, well, no, this is this is a left issue. This is you know just an anti-God issue. But listen to what he's saying. That's what you would think. But recently, Jeff Shipley, who is a Republican representative with a libertarian bent. I mean, if we just go by that line alone, this guy sounds like he's on our side. Uh, recently proposed two bills to legalize the medical use of psilocybin and remove it from the state's list of controlled su substances. So he wants to completely remove it from the list. And this guy is a guy who basically, uh, as he, he basically is what I would identify as. I'd say I'm, you know, I would be a Republican. I would vote mostly re Republican, but I want the state out of my affairs as much as possible. I sort of have a libertarian bent. Exactly. You see, the argument is this, and I need to just really let this soak in your mind because this is the argument that you're going to hear. I've already heard it several times, and it's going to be it's going to be the go-to argument in the next couple of years to come. Sovereignty over consciousness. Okay? Sovereignty. Who can and can who can and can't tell me what I can and can't do in my own mind? You see, that's why this isn't necessarily because I've heard very conservative people talk about this in with giving two thumbs up. This isn't a bipartisan or this isn't an, a, a partisan issue. This is a, this is on both sides of the aisle. This is a bipartisan mm -hmm. issue because think about it. Sovereignty over consciousness. No one can tell me what I can and can't do in my own mind. You know, this is a very libertarian, very small government. Like, no, right. the government can't tell me what I can and can't do with my mind. So this is really going to be on both sides of the aisle. But it was never just about, like we said in the beginning of the program, 21 states, and it's just, there's actually much, many more states that are going to get involved in this very soon. 21 states have already decriminalized or legalized or will allow small amounts of marijuana, but it has never been about weed. It has never been about marijuana. I can prove that to you. I have an article here that I'm pulling up on my computer, and it's from the Daily Signal. And it says this, Denver's magic mushroom vote moves drug legalization beyond marijuana. So I want to read just two lines from this article. This is line number one I want to read. The movement was never about marijuana. It was hmm. always about legalizing all drugs. Who said that? Kevin Sabat, a senior advisor in the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy under Presidents Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. A senior White House Office official think about this and he is saying on record the movement was never about marijuana it was always about legalizing all drugs wow he goes on to say this i don't want to put people in prison for pot but i don't want to commercialize marijuana line two i'm not surprised to see efforts to decriminalize other drugs sabbat told the daily signal quote mushrooms are the next easiest argument hmm. Psychedelic, see, psychedelic mushrooms, psilocybin. Mushrooms are the next easiest argument. It's low-hanging fruit. They're not going to call for legalizing crack and cocaine now, but they are not going to stop with mushrooms in Denver. Okay, so think about what he just said. They're not going to stop with mushrooms in Denver, but no one's thinking about legalizing crack and cocaine. 
So what is he talking about? He's talking about more potent forms of psychedelics. Exactly. He's talking about the psychedelic world. He is talking about DMT. He is talking about ayahuasca. I'm telling you right now that they are trying to brainwash this generation. Absolutely. They absolutely are. You know, I had a passing thought yesterday. We were talking a lot of what there's this great movement that started pretty much around the 60s. And a lot of what has started there has found its its fruit in our generation. When you look at the the complete takeover of campuses by uh, com- by left ideology, that started in the 60s. Yeah. When you look at the complete takeover of the media, that started in the 60s. And what were they doing in the 60s? They were smoking weed. They were expanding their mind through LSD. They started incorporating it into songs to you know get people interested uh, on a social level. You know, it, and when we were talking about the weed model, how they're going to use the weed model to incorporate um, psilocybin and then eventually DMT, I had this passing thought that, like, what if this was always the plan? What if weed was was them just testing the waters, and when it went through, they're like, wow, this is the time. This is when we can attack. Let's yeah. let's pass through psychedelics, and that's not some crazy theory. It's it's been established. That is exactly what they were doing. Well, the those activists in the '60s that you're referring to, those activists became highly educated, and then they became evangelists. Evangelists in our universities, and I say the word evangelist not in the Christian sense, but in the sense of they are selling their ideas. Yeah. to another generation. They are they are beautifying their ideology on the college campuses. So these these activists became professors in our universities. I'm telling you right now in the same way in in, in the book of Genesis, okay? Whenever the watch whenever the watchers whenever the Nephilim came down or excuse me whenever the fallen angels came down, mm-hmm. bred with the daughters of Eve and created the supernatural human beings, there, there it was some trippy stuff going on in those days. And it was even even in the book of Enoch, which like I've said before is not Holy Spirit inspired, right. but it is to be observed through a historical book. In the same way, I have other history books behind me that there are many errors in those history books, but you still don't just throw out it a history book. Right. And I believe that ayahuasca was given to the masses. And it was for it was it was just the, it was their way of communing with the spirit world. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now that you you heard my testimony, which was uh that was the hardest show I've probably ever done. Um, really me going into the depths of what happened to me whenever I was a junior in high school and the amount of deception. And like I said, whenever I went to that other place, I have no idea if it was real or fake. It was in my head or not, but I can tell you right now that it was complete 100% deception from this so-called spirit entity, which I would say was a fallen angel feeding Mm -hmm. me these horrific lies, literally taking me from everything that I had known about God and just flipping it upside down and lying to me. And already whenever DMT and ayahuasca is completely illegal in America, millions of people are smoking it every year. What happens whenever it is completely legal in America? Hmm. And what happens in the fourth industrial revolution whenever technology is embedded within us? We've talked about this. The three waves of the industrial revolutions. Well, the fourth one we are now entering into, which is characterized by technology being embedded within the human body. This is going to happen in the next 15 years. I'm telling you right now. There's already, you know, you know that you know this. There's already been several stories of people getting microchips in them. But I'm saying like a completely connected world. This fourth industrial revolution where everything is connected. Everything is talking to one another. Literally trillions of connected devices sending all the information, information and real time data to what they refer to as a global brain. When I say they, these are like the elite that I was able to sit before in uh, different places in Asia, London. And these other places. Let me tell you right now that everything is is connected to this. Well, I was going to say a point. What was I? Do you know what my point I was getting ready to just say? Oh, I it was so good. I don't know what it was. What was it? What was I just saying before this? 
See, this is where my co-host Andrew. You got to figure this out. I failed. <laughs> I'm just decent. Oh, no, I'm uh, two weeks in too early. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let me just go on with this with this next point that the deception that I experienced in that realm whenever I was a junior in high school, millions of others are experiencing that. I remember what I was going to say now. And we're entering into the fourth industrial revolution when technology is going to be embedded within us. Mm. This is going to sound so trippy um, and so conspiracy. Like, Zach, you've really, you've really gone off the deep end. But I believe that whenever the human body is literally embedded with technology and there is possibly a, a chip within us, um, I'm not talking about necessarily the mark of the beast, but maybe a chip that is within the back of our head. We've talked about how... Silicon Valley elite have already prepared this, you know, um, Brian Johnson already has a company called Braintree that he's already successfully planted several microchips in the brains of human beings. And it's right now it's, it's always through rose colored glasses. It's helping mm -hmm. with, with PTSD and, and, uh, and Parkinson's, but whenever they become as mainstream as cell phones in your pockets, quote from Brian Johnson, what happens whenever they are able to just give you a little bit of DMT, release a little bit of DMT through that microchip in you. Just microdosing DMT throughout the day. All I'm saying, that's crazy. But I just wanted to kind of put it out there so that whatever happens in 15 years, I can say, oh, you know, I said that back in 2019. You can collect your check. <laughs> yeah. Okay, listen, there's a few more things I really need to get into because we have a lot more to cover. Mm -hmm. Sovereignty over consciousness. I want to tell you the arguments that you're going to hear. Who can and can't tell you what you can and can't do with your own consciousness that is the argument can the government control what you are doing with your mind in the privacy of your own home i mean your body doesn't belong to the government your body your mind are your private property how can a governmental entity tell you what you can and can't do in the privacy of your own home mm -hmm. not affecting anybody else what you're doing with your own consciousness if you want to go explore your consciousness how can the government tell me what i can and can't do these are the arguments that you're going to hear who can and can't tell you what you can and can't do with your own consciousness understand this it's actually the same logic because it is sin. You know, it, it should be don't do drugs. Don't do psychedelics. Like right. the Lord has said, do not partake in any pharmacia at all. Stay away from it. It should be that. But they're creating these fine sounding arguments. It's the same logic that the LGBT community takes. In the same way, it's like, you know, who can, who can tell me who I can and can't love? You see, it's it's the similar type of argument. Who can and can't tell me what I can and can't do with my own consciousness? It should be kids don't do drugs. And for the LGBT, it should be, you know, God's ways are perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, the perfect representation of the Lord's oneness is whenever a man and a woman become one. But no, it's you can't tell me who I can and can't love. You see, here's another one. How can a society that sanctions some drugs, like pharmaceuticals they're okay with, tobacco, alcohol, but yet prohibit plants that have been used in sacred traditions to unite with ourselves and each other and the divine for thousands of years? One of the leaders within this movement, I don't know if leader, I'll tell you, he is a leader, but he has a massive platform, and that's, that's Graham Hancock. This is a powerful quote that he, that he said on the subject. And he is for the use. I stand here invoking the hard-won right of freedom of speech to call for and demand another right to be recognized. And that is the right of adult sovereignty over consciousness. There's a war on consciousness in our society. And if we as adults are not allowed to make sovereign decisions about what to experience with our own consciousness while doing no harm to others, including the decisions to use, responsi uh, to use responsibly ancient and sacred visionary plants, then we cannot claim to be free in any way. 
It's useless for our society to go around the world imposing our form of democracy on others while we nourish this rot at the heart of society. We do not allow individual freedom over consciousness. This is what we're dealing with. And already right now in Denver, you will no longer go to jail for taking psychedelics. Or, uh, excuse me, you'll no longer go to jail for exploring your consciousness. <laughs> okay, you see what I'm saying? This, yeah. is, this is what is taking place right now. Any final thoughts on this subject? Uh, yeah, just, just uh, I did just have a final thought. It's, um, you know, if even the elect could be deceived, and I want to be very, very, very careful here, because, like, listen, I love Ben Shapiro. I listen to him all the time. There's a lot of guys that I really listen to. But if even the elect can be deceived, the the, the truth is that um, this deception won't be a partisan issue. And if we make idols for ourselves out of people, then we could fall into this same deception. And one big point that we're saying is that this, what he just said is a very libertarian standpoint. And Christ has to come before our politics. Christ has to come before my politics. That's right. And that's that's, right. all, that's really all I had to say about it. We have just a couple minutes left, and I just really want to hit this. Just very briefly, Just and I'm going to talk about my points. Mm -hmm. Really briefly, just tell us, and we have about a minute and a half left, mm -hmm. what just took place in Alabama. So in Alabama, awesome stuff. Alabama, the most, um, the most extensive abortion ban has been passed into law. So it's officially, um, in November, it will, it will officially be law, um, which says that Abortion at any gestational period from the point of conception is now um, banned or will be in November. Um, and that the only exception is for the life of the mother. If, if her life is endangered by complications through pregnancy, it does not include rape. It does not include incest. And the reason for that is because it is trying to establish personhood for the unborn person. Um, and and stuff like that would conflict that main message. So the goal of this is to contest Roe v. Wade. They want this to go to the Supreme Court. They want them to rule on it, and they want a good ruling. That's right. So also, so that's what we need to be praying for. We need to be praying for right now. Pray that this will not be shot down in the lower courts, that it will make it all the way to the Supreme Court, and we can finally get rid of the ridiculous idiotic ruling of Roe v. Wade and that we would save babies. I mean, truly, like, this is, this is, the Lord will, could heal this land from this. Yeah. 3,000 babies are murdered every day. A silent 9-11 is taking place every single day. This is our chance. Just even hit up your social media. Blast what's going on with your God Opinions, your opinions that, well, actually, we don't have opinions with what the Word of God <laughs> says about right, abortion, about right. the life of a child. Also, this could be really good for um, even getting another four years with a very conservative president, President Donald Trump. The election is in 18 months at the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade because of Kavanaugh. Who Trump put in there, essentially, you know, this will be, this will be a, a I think it'll be a landslide in the next election. This would be, he would literally get all of the conservative votes, all the Catholic votes, yeah. all the Christian votes. A couple of different things from Michael Tech from the New York Times. I like what he said. Uh, President Trump has been speaking very directly on this. And he says this, by speaking so directly of, the, of his opposition to abortion, Mr. Trump is putting himself squarely on one side of perhaps the nation's most divisive social issue. And amen, praise God for it. I mm -hmm. wouldn't say it's one of the most divisive. I would say it is the most Absolutely. divisive. We are so out of time. I just want to say this really quickly. And it's like, wow, you're going to end on this, Zach? I would honestly say expect a civil war. Expect a civil war. I want to quote someone from for you, Dr. Michael Brown. A coming civil war over abortion. I'll read this one paragraph and we've got to go. A civil war is coming to America. Only this time it will be abortion rather than slavery that divides the nation. And although I hope with all my heart that it will not be a physically violent war, the ideological conflict will certainly be violent and intense. And let me tell you right now, it's time to fight for the life of the unborn. It is time to fight. Pray that this would go to the Supreme Court and that the Lord would be exalted through all of 
this. We have got to go. We'll see you next week. If you'd like to donate, just go to our website at ZachDrewShow.com. Click that bright orange donate button now. And don't forget to click that automated payment method so we know we can count on you each month. You can also write us at IGBY PO Box 797, Decatur, Illinois 62525.